This is a podcast from the Nuffield Department of Medicine. Dr Sumi Biswas talks about the development of a vaccine aimed at the mosquito stage of the malaria parasite cycle. Hello Sumi. Hi. What are transmission blocking malaria vaccines? So the malaria parasite uh, plasmodium requires two hosts to complete its life cycle. Uh, One is us humans and the other host is a female Anopheles mosquito. So the female Anopheles mosquito transmits the parasite from one infected individual to another. So when we get infected, initially the parasite reaches the liver and causes what we call the liver stage infection. After about seven to 10 days in the liver, the parasite enters the bloodstream and multiplies in the blood, within the red blood cells. And during this um, phase, uh, the symptoms of malaria are um, evident in humans. During the blood state infection, the male and female forms of the parasite are also uh, developing in the blood, and these are circulate in the bloodstream. So when a mosquito comes and bites an individual that is infected with malaria, they pick up the male and the female forms of the parasite in its blood meal. So the male and the female parasites will go into the mosquito's midgut, and as soon as it reaches the midgut, these parasites will be activated and they fertilize to form the next stage of the parasite. So the parasite has to go through several sexual development stages within the mosquito and then again get to the stage which can then cause an infection in humans. So traditionally, vaccines target the liver stage and the blood stage of the parasite, which are the stages that affect us humans. But transmission blocking vaccines aim to prevent the development of the parasite within the mosquito. So we vaccinate humans. The aim is to vaccinate humans so that the antibodies that we generate in these humans can be taken up together with the parasites and they will, dev- they will prevent the parasite from developing within the mosquito. So then the mosquito can't transmit the parasite to another individual. So what stage is the research at currently? So at the Jenner Institute, we have generated several candidate uh, vaccines and we have used them in preclinical studies and shown that we can induce antibodies which can be taken up by the mosquito in a blood meal and these antibodies would block the development of the parasite in the mosquito so the mosquito is unable to transmit the parasite to another um, individual. So um, the way we do these is we actually rear Anopheles mosquitoes, which is the mosquito species responsible for transmitting malaria. We have an insect tree where we grow these mosquitoes. And then what we do is we feed the mosquitoes a mixture of the parasite, the malaria uh, parasite, and also the antibodies that we have generated by vaccination. So the hope is once we leave it for the time required for the parasite to develop in the mosquito, if our vaccines work, then there will be no parasite in the mosquito. So we know from proof of concept studies in preclinical models that this can be achieved and we can uh, do that in the lab. And what is the next step now? Once we've established proof of concept, uh, the next step would be to uh, vaccinate humans. So in Oxford, we would look into doing phase one human clinical trials. We manufacture the vaccines as clinical grade material and then use them to vaccinate humans. Um, Once uh, we are ready, we will recruit volunteers in Oxford and um, vaccinate them. Um, The primary aim of these phase one trials is uh, to look at the safety of the vaccines, first of all, but from previous uh, experience with similar kind of vaccines, uh, we know these vaccines are safe. But with every new vaccine, we do a phase one study to assess the safety of the vaccine. So once we assess the safety, we also collect blood samples from these volunteers and we will look at if we have been able to generate antibodies in humans and then again use the same feeding assay to test if these serum from the volunteers can block the development of the parasite in the mosquito. So in the phase one studies, if we can show that we can replicate what we have seen in the lab in humans and the results are promising, the next steps would be to then test the vaccines in a malaria endemic area. What are the most important lines of research that have developed over the past five or ten years? Importantly, we uh, now uh, the malaria parasite genome has been sequenced 
and we have more and more knowledge with time about the biology of the parasite and the way the parasite interacts with its host, whether it is the mosquito or the human. And these um, help us to design better vaccines. Um, apart from this, I think we vaccine strategies and vaccine technologies have improved over the time. So now we have a varied range of technologies that can be used to induce maybe better immune responses than, than we could. So that has clearly helped vaccinology uh, a lot. And in terms of having lots of candidates to choose from, I think different labs have worked to develop new assays and those are now being standardized across, across the field. And these assays actually help us choose what is the best candidate to be translated to humans and tested in, in humans. So why does your line of research matter? Why should we put money into it? Malaria is a huge public health burden. Um, we know the most advanced malaria vaccine called RTSS uh, is in phase three clinical trials um, and has been recently in the news um, with early indications showing that the efficacy of the vaccine is only about 25 to 30 percent. So in the field, we realize that this vaccine on its own is not going to be enough. So we need to work on other vaccines or better vaccines that we could use alone or maybe in combination with, with RTSS. And one way of uh, targeting malaria has always been to prevent transmission of the parasite by either using insecticide treated bed nets, which prevent the mosquito from biting someone. Or if we have an effective transmission blocking vaccine, you could achieve the same where you can stop malaria um, transmission and which is going to be very important as well if we ever were to achieve the goal of elimination or even eradicating malaria. And finally, how does your research fit into translational medicine within the department? So the Jenner Institute um, aims to develop vaccine against a variety of infectious diseases. Um, and the field of vaccinology is incomplete without translating the ideas that we develop in the lab uh, into the clinic. Um, and this is why w the ideas that we develop in the lab are tested in human clinical trials in Oxford and then later on in, um, in other parts of the world as well. So my research group also works to uh, look at other ways and technologies to improve antibody response. And these technologies can also then be applied to a, a number of different vaccine applications um, throughout different diseases. Thank you, Simi.